Well, hey everybody, it's Kevin here with Mobile DJ Remastered. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel. Today, I wanna talk about annual maintenance to clean up your music library. Why would we do this? Why, why am I uh, talking about this today? Well, it's because you want to make sure that you do not carry a bunch of fluff or clutter in your music library. If you have things that um, do not have any utility, they have no use. You can't, uh, you know, deploy the audio or the track or the sample in any of your events or any of your uh, productions or anything. Then it's kind of a waste and it's just clogging things up and it's making it more difficult. That waste makes it more difficult for you to find what you need when you need it. Also, I think it's a good um, practice and I do it annually. You could do it different uh, on a different schedule, but I like to go through my music library in this way because it helps me become more familiar with my music library and I'm refreshed for the next year. So there might be some tracks that I, I got or I downloaded and I just never really got into or never really played, but I, I have a good feeling about them. I think they would work in certain scenarios. Well, this is going to refresh my enthusiasm and my awareness of those type of tracks. So hopefully that makes sense. And Without further ado, I'm going to jump in. Here I have Pioneer DJ Record Box. It's the music software I use. And you could use pretty much any software. If you're using Virtual DJ, Serato, anything, uh, I think these practices and this method will kind of translate into any software. But I'm using Record Box. And first thing I like to do is just make sure I've got the screen set up for my little activity here. So um, of course, this is like the base screen. This is an export mode. And I like this because it doesn't clutter the screen with a bunch of like performance, uh, you know, uh, features and functions. So I go ahead and make sure it's in performance mode. I turn it out of the player mode and turn it into full browser so I can see more tracks on the screen. Um, and I really don't need my crates over here, but uh, I will talk about them in a minute here, but um, don't really need them right now either. So what are the columns of data? Because I think you need to write columns of data in order to do this. Um, I use um, this one right here. This is, let me expand it. This is DJ play count. And this is how many times I've played the track in a live setting or in an event, or maybe in a DJ mix or something that I made on Mixcloud. This is how many times I've played the track. And, uh, you know, it, it basically resets uh, when you reinstall the software and you might be able to reset it in another way. But this is from, let's say two or three years ago when I first um, reset my record box software. So that's gonna be important to me because I, I'll tell you a little bit. And then also on here that's important to me is this rating system. And this rating system is how I'm gonna help streamline my process of going through uh, these songs and making sure I've got uh, the right tracks that I want. Okay. <clears throat> so I'll talk about that a little bit and uh, everything else is kind of useful, obviously year, track title, artist. And if you guys watch other um, videos on my channel, you might know that I use the, uh, I basically rename track titles so that I have my own little uh, nomenclature. So for example, this is last Friday night by Katy Perry, but it's an EDM remix. So I have uh, in just means it's a, uh, BP, it's a um, DJ edit and it has an intro. So I'll know that there's an intro at the beginning that I can play with and mix with. Um, and then of course it's a remix. So that means basically that um, it's, uh, you know, it's not the original version of last Friday night. That just is my nomenclature. I put it in square brackets. Um, sometimes I'll add little words or I'll do some other things. And you can see some tracks uh, over here in the preview wave, you can see some tracks if they're dancers, I'll uh, go ahead and cue them, put in hot cues so that I have mix in, mix out spots or, um, you know, hype spots or mix outs in the middle or whatever. Um, and then sometimes if it's not like, you know, um, if it's not something that's more of a dancer, I'll just leave it alone or maybe I haven't gotten to it yet. Usually I try to do my, my cues right when I'm coming in here and importing songs. Anyway, that those are kind of my uh, some of my feels that I'm going to use. Now, uh, first, let's see here. My collection is 7,600 uh, tracks. So this is my collection on my laptop. I have it on my solid state drive on my laptop, on my MacBook. And 
First, what I'll do is go ahead and look at uh, DJ No Plays, okay? So this is, I've got the song, but I've just never played it. Now, you can kind of see, here's another, I, I like this, uh, this is a date added piece too. This is really um, effective for me because what it can, can allow me to do is see when I've got the track and put it in my DJ software. So uh, again, this kind of, uh, there was a big surge up at the beginning of uh, when I first got the, the laptop, uh, this new laptop and rebuilt my record box library in 2019. So there's a bunch of tracks at the, the beginning there, but check this out. So just this song, The Things We Do For Love by 10CC. Great, great little track, um, 1977, um, you know, uh, so it's a little bit of a classic rock track. Um, and I got it back in October of 2019. So it's a couple years old since I brought it in and I've played it zero times. Okay. So why do I, uh, so if I were to kind of give you a little taste of this song, um, maybe you probably don't know it. And it probably sounds like something that you'd hear at, at, uh, Home Depot as a uh, background track or something on an elevator or something. Well, this is just a chill yacht rock type classic song, and I liked it. Um, I, I I remember it, you know, kind of uh, hearing it when I was growing up, and I've heard it in pop pop culture or whatever. Okay, so I'm just explaining to you, like, hey, I got this song because I I think it's a it's a good it's a good one, and I feel like, hey, yeah, that's a good that's a good track. I should probably get it. Um, okay, and also, and, and that's why I got it. It wasn't, uh, no one really requested it or no one asked for it. It was just, that was something on me. And also another little trick is, it, it, let's say I don't remember, like, what? why do I have this song or what, what, why do I get, why did I get this track or what did I think? Usually when I get my tracks, I put them into a related crate and I'll put them in the crate. So, you know, for example, let's say, um, I got I got this and I thought that hey this would be a great th I've heard this on the yacht rock, yacht rock radio the the channel on Sirius XM and that's a good chill channel I think that would be a good track to get so under sub genre I've got a yacht rock crate um, yeah check it out and you know it's got a bunch of yacht rock in here so I can look at this track and if I click this little double arrow right here this will tell me where. I have this track stored. So check it out. I have had, I have it in the Yacht Rock folder already. So that would be a reminder. I also have it in my wedding cocktail, my wedding dinner. Um, and I actually had it in a couple of events. So back in 2020 and 2021, I had it in a couple of uh, playlists for events. I do think it's a pretty good song. Um, but guess what? I didn't play it. I had it in the playlists. I just didn't play it. So, you know what, I'm, I like it enough um, and I'm gonna keep it around. So when I, when I say um, I'm trying to thin the herd, basically what I'm doing is I'm trying to determine, is there utility? Like, can I use it? And do I like it? Uh, because that's, that's another factor. Like, I, I like this song. I, I did give it three stars, which um, I, I should probably tell you, my rating system is uh, one, Star means, you'll see in a minute, get rid of it. I don't like it at all. Two stars is, mm, I'm on the fence. I don't know if I like it or not. I don't really like it. Three is, I like it okay. Four is, I really like it. And five is, I love it. It's one of my favorite songs, okay? So this one is, I like it okay. And I do feel like there's utility. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep it around, even though it's, it has a zero play count. But let's go ahead and, uh, oh, pardon some of these <laughs> some of these tracks. Kind of funny. Um, but uh, let's see, I'm gonna, here, here's one. So this one I marked when I got it, okay, I never played it uh, in a live setting, and it's uh, to anyone, I am the best. Okay, let's see where it's stored. Cause I don't, honestly, I don't remember. I think this is a K-pop type track. Oh uh, yeah, 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 okay. So this track is, uh, my two sons thought that this is a, a good track when they were growing up. Uh, and they, they liked it. It is a K-pop type track. And uh, let's hear it for a second. Yeah, okay. So this one is something that they liked and whatever. Okay. So if I were to do maybe a party with them, throwback 
jam party or something. Maybe I, I would break it out, uh, something like that. So see how like, I didn't remember what this was, zero play count. I would never, I don't think I would break this out unless I had like a request for, you know, I don't know, 2014 K-pop. But I, all of a sudden, just looking at this, oh, I remember why it um, it was something that I got. Okay, a track that I, I got and that I wanna keep. So I will keep it around just because it has that intrinsic or that utility value that I'm gonna maybe use it um, for, for, you know, um, my sons okay so let's scroll a little bit further and here look at this one here's one zero play count from an artist called a wall and the tracks lover boy okay and this is back in 2019 this one i recall was a request for somebody to bring into an event and um if you look here i can see the event playlist that i brought it into which was a homecoming dance um and uh, i brought it in for the first 30 seconds. So this is a song that I'm just not sure about and I don't know if I liked it or not. And I brought it into a playlist, but I've never played it. And I can't think of any other utility. Let's go ahead and listen to it just for a second. You got me mesmerized, so then I gotta stay. Feel like a okay, so that's Lover Boy by AWOL. Not really a big fan. Um, and you know, if I if I think about it, um, I could go in over, you know, kind of look up sometimes I'll do you know I'll go into um you know Spotify if I you know that's a something I could do go into Spotify or go go to some music app and look up the play count or see is it a popular song but you know what I'm not feeling it uh, this song I don't think I'm into so I'm going to downgrade it to one star okay so I just wanted to talk you through those few uh steps of hey you know Go, go, you know, first I sort by DJ play count and I start to look through the songs. Now I'm going to actually do that with each of these. Okay. I'm going to go through and look at all my songs. Now there's a lot. Okay. But the process goes pretty fast. Like look at all these with no plays, no plays. There's a lot of them. Now, uh, this is something that goes pretty fast when you're kind of bouncing through. And what happens invariably is Let's say I'm kind of I'm coming down here and I say, oh, bank account. What? I've never played bank account at an event. And I, I just I like that song. Uh, if you don't know it, it's, it's kind of like just a, you know, it's probably the pinnacle of late 2010s uh, trap. OK, it's just really uh, I like it. Uh, it's kind of shows up in some memes, too. Um I've seen it around. So I look at this one and I say, oh, it's, yeah, look at that. It's in my trap subgenre, but I don't have it anywhere else. So I might need to, um, you know, that kind of re-familiarizes myself a little bit. Like, oh yeah, I need to play this track more. Okay, cool. So I wanted to show you guys this. I'm going to go through all of my songs here and I won't do it on camera because that'd be a, <laughs> I won't do it here. Uh, it'll take a long time for me and it, it'll take a couple days. Okay. So as I kind of go through and mosey through and, uh, you know, you could always do some other way of doing this might be, I'm just straight so sorting by DJ play count and artists, as you can see, like it's alphabetical or whatever by artist. Now you could say, Hey, you know what? Just show me, uh, let's do rock first. Let's just do rock or, you know what? I just want to do hip hop and kind of go down and do my hip hop. Um, some of these songs, I can't believe I haven't played. Um, and sometimes uh, you'll notice I got like, he here's an example. Uh, let's see. Um, I'm going to show you guys. Well, here's, here's an example right here. I've got two tracks. Okay. Of the same song, one's a remix and one's one's not. Or sometimes you'll have something and then a redrum, and I might play the redrum more than the other versions. Like one great one, uh, one great one is the Miley track uh, "Party in the USA." Right. So uh, check this out. I play her this remix version that I have. I love. I love it. I play it thirty four times. I've played it over the past few years. Okay. Um, however, this one, this redrum of Party in the USA, I've only played it twice, so I don't like it as much. And um, by the way, uh, I already decided in my head, like, you know what, 
I love this song, and so it's typically a five star, but this re-drum, it just doesn't have a lot of utility for me because I, I typically I'd play the remix or I'd play uh, you know the straight song, maybe the intro edit um, if I didn't want the remix uh, sound in the background, which I, I really like this, this version. It's not crazy. It's not an EDM remix or anything, but so guess what? This one gets a one star. I'm taking it down to one star. Okay, cool. So that means I don't like it, get rid of it. So just a little bit about that. Now, also notice that uh, I was talking about, I was talking about sorting by DJ play count and basically going through all the zeros, okay? And finding and saying, hey, let me, let me go ahead and go through, oh man, I can't believe I haven't played Peaches and Cream. Um, so in any case, good track, good track. Some of these, you know, you just, you go through and you're like, oh, Man, this is a banger. I need to like elevate it. And I have other crates. Like I have my bangers crate that sometimes I'll just bounce I'll bounce into because I'm I'm I need something quick or I just want to get get hype for a minute or whatever. And I wouldn't put peaches and cream in a banger category, but I definitely sometimes I'll be coming through here and I'll find a banger. Um I think Don't Trust Me is one of those. Oh my gosh, this is a good song if you don't know it. Um Don't trust me. Such a good song. So, in any case, um, so you know what? I'm going to go ahead and put this in the bangers because that is a good song. I need to play that more. So, in any case, uh, and you might think of other things like uh, as you're going through here, like, oh, yeah, In the Dark. That's a great rock song, classic. Um, I need to make sure to have that in my, I don't know, my bars uh, location crates, you know, because if I'm playing a bar, that's a good, that's a good jam to play in a bar. So, hopefully, going through this process of looking at your zero plays and going through each song and just thinking about, am I, you know, how do, how would I rate this track? Would I, do I have utility? If I don't like it and there's no utility, like I don't think I could use it anywhere, then put it to a one star and I'll show you what, what I do with those in a minute. Okay. So there's some other things too. Like, let's say I played a track and here's an interesting, like, let's say a, 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 an interesting way to look at this. These are all my zero plays. But let's say I played a track because it was a special request and, um, you know, it's just it was something for a wedding or something for a ceremony or or, you know, something that I have no utility because it was way uh, out of left field. But it was a special request from a cer certain couple. So I kind of scroll down here and I will also go through the ones, the one plays. OK, um, so I'll go through these. Uh, and just be like, hmm, I, you know, I, I'm going to go through just the same scrutiny I would when my zero plays, okay? And a lot of these tracks are going to be um, songs that, you know, Star Tender. What a great, great song, great track, and I'll definitely keep this one. Um, I think I, I might have, like, if I resort, yeah, okay, cool. I do have the regular edit, uh, and then this is just like more of an EDM edit. Uh, let me see. I always tag my songs with the with the genre and yeah you can see here i tagged this one <clears throat> with uh, edm remix so this is super helpful by the way to have these tags because i can subsort them or i can just remind myself but any case so that's cool you know i got uh i've got that one but as i go through here uh let's see okay what is this <laughs> what is this praise the lord deshawn the shine i don't know what this is i mean i like asap rocky but I have no idea what this is. Let's just hear it for a second. Okay, this doesn't sound like a jam I would use often, <laughs> and I don't think I'd, I, I don't even really remember it. So let me see. I got it. When did I get it? Okay, January of 19. It's an intro edit. Okay, so I must have got it from one of the DJ pools, uh, usually DMS. Most of my tracks are from. Uh, or I've been using Club Killers lately, too, to check things out. But let's look. Um, okay, looks like I put I played it in June of 19. It's in my history file, but I don't even have it in a playlist. So guess what, guys? I didn't really love it anyway, and I don't feel any utility for it. It's not in any of my subcrates. Boom, I'm going to take it down to one star. So do you see how that works? I, I'm trying to... I'm sourcing, I'm scanning for uh, tracks that I can call or cut or get rid of. 
that's so important because um, what I'm trying to do is make my library a little less bulky and thinner and more streamlined. Okay, so you get you get the point. So I, I would go through those zero plays. I'd go through the one plays and just look at wh where are some songs that maybe, uh, you know, gosh, uh, you, usually I can see, like I'm looking at the three stars and things like that, like, what is this? Uh, <laughs> uh, what in the heck? Uh, oh, okay, okay. So this was a song from, uh, oh, this is, uh, I think, an Indian. This must be an Indian song. And uh, actually, it looks like it's got some uh, some hype because it's uh, it's in my turn up folder for one of the events I did for an Indian party. You know, I'll keep this one. See how that like I'm like, what the heck? And I can't remember. Um, I didn't show you guys this, but in other videos, I talk about my color code. I color code the energy of the track. And this is a bust and move track, which is a higher level of energy. You can see all my here's my levels. So down here, this is just a tool but um, it starts really here. So is it ambient, is it chill? And it goes up and up and up and up to the highest form of energy. So Bust and Move is a really good spot. That's gonna be, um, you know, it's a, it's gonna have some energy. And I so, somewhat liked it, and it looks like it fit into a couple of different events. I'm gonna keep it around for maybe an Indian event or two, you know, if I, if I have that. Um, so I'll keep that around for that. Um, and in fact, this just reminds me, and see, this is another cool thing, right? Like I, I right now have this, um, I have a gap and I just found it. Okay. This lot here live with you guys. Like I'm looking at my playlist here and I'm like, okay, well, so I have this track. It's an Indian dance song. Okay. And let's just hear it for a second. <laughs> I remember now it's kind of coming back to me. I remember um, talking to, uh, to uh, an Indian friend who's a DJ and he was telling me that there's this several songs. He was telling me several tracks that that would be you know dope to have in my collection. And this is one of them. But guess what? Look, look, I don't have a playlist or anything. These are just so I played it here. I played it once in August, probably for uh, Tania's, Tania's uh, birthday party. And look at this, uh, it's, it's in my turnip folder. So you know what I could probably do is add a crate. At, at this point, I think I need to add a crate and I think I'm gonna, I think, I don't know, maybe it's a subgenre. Um, so I think I'm gonna add a playlist and I'm gonna call it something like uh, Indian Dance, okay? I might change that name later, but I'm going to put this in there for now. And the way I do my playlists, I always kind of like uh, put them up toward the top if I need to work on them. Uh, here, I'll even put some stars on it so that I remember <laughs> that I need to work on it. Meaning I need to go through and find other Indian dance songs in my collection and put them in here. Because I have a bunch, um, you know, at least a couple dozen, and I need to get them in here. So um, that's great. I also, this is one I need to work on, as you can see. I'm... I'm trying to get some hits together, some some old EDM hits, and so I got my playlist up here. But this will be good. I'll, I'll even put that up here too, just so I remember. I want to work on the that later. So okay, you guys can see. Not only is this process great because it's helping me go through and um, you know think through about my tracks and which ones to keep and not, but I'm thinking about organization. I'm thinking about. Um, you know, new new collections or new playlists or crates that I never had before. So uh, that's that. Going through the zeros and going through the ones. My next step is what I want to kind of do is try to figure out what songs I have that are, what tracks I have that have multiple versions. And I think the, uh, you know, <laughs> wow, look at that. As soon as I click sort by track title, a, a great suspect came up right here. Look at this. Okay, so I got five versions of Outkast's Hey Ya. Well, one is a, um, one is a cover. It's like an acoustic cover. And by the way, these acoustic covers, look at this. I have a acoustic covers crate, which is good. This is really good for like, dinner at a wedding or just like a chill kind of vibe that you want um with familiar pop uh, and other songs but uh, you know it's good to have that crate 
Um, I've used it a lot. Okay, so look at this. I play um, I play this song a lot. You know, I play it. I played it at eleven. Uh, actually, sorry, twenty five events. Right, twenty five events um, plus the cover tune. So, it, or I'm sorry, that'd be twenty six. Can't do math. Okay, so 26 events I played this song at. And uh, I have this all over the place. It's uh, th Let's just look at this one. Okay, this one version. Let's look at it. I've got it. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so <laughs> this is a lot to look at. Um, you can see uh, playlist events. So the, when it, wherever it says events, these are um, event playlists that I created. Okay? And then crates is what really we want to see. So I've got it in my... Uh, white girl dance uh, crate. Shout out to Nick Spinelli for that idea, having a white girl crate, which I love. A uh, feel good family jams crate. Um, I put it in my dance crate and I've got it in my bangers crate. Uh, so it's basically in those crates. I've got it in a lot of people's events and I got it in a lot of histories. Okay, so I played it. Okay, so that's fair. That has a lot of utility. Obviously, I'm going to keep this one around. Um, and I'm not trying to judge these. What I'm trying to do is see, I'm, I'm almost like looking at it across. Like how many versions do I have? Do I need all these versions? Could I get rid of one or two? And this is what I'm trying to do here. Just like the party in the USA idea. Now in this song in particular, I remember I used to have a couple remixes and things and I got rid of them. Um, so actually this is my, my trimmed down version. I always like to have, if it's a real popular song, I like to keep the, uh, you know, especially you, you, you buy you buy a couple versions of these same tracks. I like to keep the one, uh, especially for well-known tracks, keep the one that's the original, uh, the, either the radio edit or the original album track, and then keep, you know, the intro edits that I'd actually play, especially for dancing. Um, I like to keep those around. I like the short play version of this one just because it cuts out, like, if someone really wants to hear the whole song, it's on a must play or it's, you know, part of a, I don't know, some other, uh, I, I've got to use it for someone who really wants the whole song and I need to put it on the dance floor. I can use that version, but I play this one, I think more, probably more recently I've been playing this one, uh, which is just a short edit. I even have a, I, I see that I put in a little um, mix out point in the middle of the short edit. So this is a, it's only two minutes. So anyway, right now, I guess my thought is, my gut is telling me just keep these because I have different different uses for the different versions. Oh, this one, by the way, this is a transition edit. This takes me from the 128 uh, BPM range up to the 159 that the song's actually in. So this is a great to transition and uh, it just helps you. I know, obviously, we can use the pitch fader and do our own, um, you know, uh, ramp up on the on the on the BPM. But this just helps me, um, you know, if I need a quick to come into this song. But you know what? Um, I've played it zero times, and you know what? The spirit of this is: what are we going to do? How, how are we going to do? You know, make tough decisions sometimes to eliminate so that we don't have waste. So I'm gonna go ahead and one star this guy, okay? So, you know, inspired by making this video, telling you guys and preaching, I, I, I'm uh, <laughs> eating my own dog food, I guess. I'm doing what I'm, I'm saying, I'm gonna get rid of that one. And I actually don't think, yeah, look, I've got it in a couple different um, playlists, crates, but yeah, it's not gonna hurt me not to have that. I can use the pitch fader to do a transition and some of these transition edits, they're nice if uh, it just helps you, but um, I don't need it. I'm gonna zap that one. Okay, cool. So I go through the versions of songs like I just showed you. I go through, I kind of do like, um, I guess you could call it a horizontal look or, a, or looking at the remixes and uh, I'll make that call. Uh, also, here's another suspect, like look at this. I've got two Stevie Wonder Higher Grounds and uh, I've, I haven't played the the regular track or the intro edit. And this one, it's a good track. Okay. Maybe you know it. But I, do I really need the intro edit? Like, when am I ever going to... I mean, even... It's got a good funky beat to it. But... 
I, I don't need the intro edit for this. I, I will never use it. Um, let me see. Um, I don't even have it. I don't even have it in any crates. Notice there's no double arrow. So I'm going to one star this one. So, okay. Um, so that you guys don't have to see all of my process uh, and me going through every single song. That's what I do. Um, I go through those few steps. And I might even do some other things, but those are the main ones. And then check this out. What I will do. Oh, by the way, I just say right off the top, um, I have all of my songs titled, my artists named, my genres picked. If I don't, if I, uh, you know, if you search through my library and you found something like, look, I just sorted by track title and I have a title for everything. You know, if there was a blank or something there, it would sort to the top or the bottom. If I had a problem with any missing title or any missing artist, those songs I would get correct and then update. And, you know, maybe it was an error or a, a song, a track that I really, really didn't want or something like that. I'll just get rid of it. Um, so that's like, I guess I should have said that at the beginning, but that's like 101 maintenance. Like make sure everything in your library is properly, has its name, has its tags, everything like that. Okay. Last thing I do guys, I know this is getting to be a long video, but, uh, I just wanted to show you thoroughly what I do and how I think about it. Last thing I do is I look at the rating and I go to my ones. Okay. So some of my ones, um, Okay, here, I scroll up to the top. Some of my ones are recently made to a one. Like, remember, we just, we did Loverboy from AWOL. Um, I made that a one recently. So I know this is one. Yep, I'm going to get rid of this one. Okay. Uh, some are like Harry Styles, golden. So I had a, uh, let me make sure I don't have another. Okay. I did an event. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, here it is. Um I played it in October for this uh, homecoming, okay? I actually like this song. I kind of came into it like, oh, yeah, you know what? This is a good song, and I've heard it a couple times now, and I, I think I got a request for, for, an, for an upcoming bat mitzvah for this. So, um, so, so in any case, I kind of like it now. I'm going to go ahead and bump it to three, three stars and get it out of my one star craziness okay so <laughs> um sometimes that happens you'll go through and you'll be like oh yeah um i definitely want to get rid of this because i just looked at it um oh here's something i actually like you know whatever sometimes it's a song like you're my sunshine by johnny cash this has no utility for me and i did get it because it was on somebody's request list but i didn't even play it it's not in my histories um uh you know as you can see so i didn't play it I didn't like it when I got it. And as soon as I got it, I went ahead and put in a one star. I mean, it's a real snoozer. I, dreamed I, held you in my arms. I mean, maybe some people might. It's from Johnny's when he was doing his like um, his last album, I think, um, or one of his last albums. It's really not that good It's uh, for me, for my taste. And also, I wouldn't use it from anything so i went ahead and gave it a one star as soon as i brought it in to my library like when i had the request and i could say that for several things uh don to chant um that one uh let's see um i'm just i'm looking at some of these tracks that uh you know uh i remember from events neville's waltz which is uh i think from harry potter just some things i think it is i don't know maybe not um just some things that i'm like you know what I made it a one star. I will go through a quick look at these and just spot like, hey, is there anything that I have changed my mind on? Okay. And usually that's a quick process because I, I, I don't want to go through here and scrutinize too much. I want to get rid of stuff and I can always get it again if I need it. But if there's gold in here, um, maybe it's worth it. So I look at the ones. Okay. I look at these one tracks, one star tracks, and I say, hey, is there any in here? that I want to save or whatever, uh, probably not. Okay, cool. Then I look at the two tracks and I say, okay, so the two tracks are songs that I, w I just wasn't sure about um, when I got it, or I was looking at it and, you know, like uh, maybe I, I thought, you know, I need to put this on the, on the block to consider. 
So I'll go through these and I'll actually listen to them. I'll think about them similarly to the zero plays and I'll be like, hey, can I make a call or do I need to leave it on a two star? Okay. Is it something where, uh, and sometimes it, it might be something where someone told me about it and I'm kind of like going to test it out. I don't like it myself, but I'm going to test it. Or maybe it's something where I know it means a lot to somebody and I want to just you know keep it around for a little bit. So it's almost like my um, recycle bin. <laughs> so, so the one stars is it's going, it's going to trash. And, and this is my recycle bin, my temporary holding area. Um, here's an example. So I got this request from, uh, I've got this bat, bat mitzvah coming up and, uh, it's Becky G's shower. And I remember this track from, you know, the day, well, you know, it's not too long ago, but you might remember it. Um, I'm dancing in the mirror, singing in the shower. Yeah. Uh, that jam. <laughs> um, it's okay. It's certainly a dancer, I guess, for the certain generation. But this this uh, song might be really popular. I don't know. I'm going to play it at the bat mitzvah. I might keep it around a little bit and drop it into a wedding and just see uh, how people... I don't know. I don't know what I'll do with it. It's kind of... Uh, it's it's on the fence for me. See, uh, even in my speech, I'm, I'm kind of waffling. Like, I don't know what to do with it. So I'm going to keep it around a little bit because I don't want to throw it away if it's going to be fire for, you know, my next few... Uh, wedding season's coming up, uh, but I certainly don't want to, you know, keep it around for too long. So I'll go through these two stars and see, is there anything I can make a call on and go ahead and either demote to one star or promote to three or more stars? You know what I'm saying? Like something that I might be like, oh, you know what? I really love that track and I should come, I should bring it back. Um, also, you'll notice, look at this. Um, I've got Tim McGraw, my best friend, but it's got two different dates on it. And I don't understand what this is all about. It might be like one's an acoustic and one's not. So I need to uh, put the right kind of music, uh, your, your little notation here in the title. So I'll be checking on that too. Maybe that's why it's two stars. Um, it, it, you don't always remember why you do some of these things. But in any case, you guys can see uh, this is my process. And once I have my one stars and I kind of go through my one, my two stars and kind of bring them down maybe to one star or move them up or leave them as is. I'll have a set of, let's say, you know, a couple dozen one star songs. And my process is real simple from there. Okay. I want to get rid of them out of the, out of the music library. I do two things. I right click, or in my case with my MacBook, I'm, I'm basically double pressing. And, uh, I take lover boy and I say, show me where the track is in my finder. And it shows me where the track is. Let me change the view here shows me where the track is i take it out and move it to trash so it's gone now okay and uh record box still shows it okay and if i move off of it and kind of come back to it you can see oh file is missing that's great remove it from collection boom and it will take it out of all playlists it'll take it out of everything as long as i'm you know i'm taking it out of the collection okay so that one, that track is gone from my life <laughs> and um, it will still exist, obviously, in my backup. Um, it will still exist in my, uh, you know, I've got my backup laptop. I've got my songs uh, up on the cloud. I've got. So if I made a mistake uh, and I recognize it right away, I can recover pretty easily and pretty quickly. Some of the DJ pools will allow you to download the songs again anyway. But so right now. I'm uh, I've I've divorced myself from that song. It's gone. And next time I do my sync up with my laptop, which is usually be before every event, I'll sync up my backup laptop, etc. I will have purged that song completely. Now, um, sometimes some people might say, "Well, don't you want to keep it around just in case you want it for later? Like, don't you want to put it in a holding sp space or like ch storage is cheap? You know, put it out on a terabyte." drive and just leave it. No, don't do that. <laughs> Resist that urge. You don't need that noise. That is clutter that you'll never need. And guess what? Here's the thing. Here's my thinking. If you need it, you can easily go and get it again. It will not be tough for you to go and retrieve that track again. And you know what? Maybe uh, you don't even need to get it. You, need, you can just stream it. You know, if you have that rare um, that rare opportunity for me to play Story of Love by Bon Jovi. Somebody's requested that track in particular. 
you know, if it's for an event or for a first dance or something like that, of course, I'm going to get the song again. I'm going to, I'm going to download it, make sure I've got it on my hard drive and I've got backup copies and everything's good because I do not want that song to fail. But if it's like, you know, somebody, I don't know, I'm just thinking about this. Here, here's this Mr. Blue Sky, which is kind of a dance, a dancer from ELL, an old rock band. Um, you know what? If someone asks for me for that, I'm going to stream it. I'm not going to download that and get it. I'll just, if someone's like real time in an event, like, hey, can you play Mr. Blue Sky? And if I'm feeling it and if it's like fitting the vibe and it's an important person asking, I'll go ahead and just stream it. But I would never... Um, I would never like want to keep this in my library just for that one off chance that that could happen. And do not put those songs in a holding place. That's just going to create more mess for you and clutter for you. I know even if you bought it, like I bought all these songs, but you know what? I don't need them. I, I, I can I can rebuy them or I can get them later. Guys, I hope this helped you, inspired you at least to get into your music library, refresh yourself, go through and cut the clutter and it'll be very good for you to start the new year um, and uh, and get into DJing next next uh, next season with a nice refreshed music collection. So guys, thank you so much for watching my channel. Please feel free to um, like and subscribe if you haven't already. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.